Do most office jobs pay people to do nothing? I have an office job and I work 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. and I will never catch up. Is your office hiring? It honestly depends on the job. I do data entry, and I'm pretty busy all shift. Yes that's how many of the jobs work. No. It's not stressful to me. Just be friendly and people will keep you around. Also. Like the other guy said. Watch office space. In a previous office job. I once read the pillars of the earth in four days. I quit after six months. Hardly any work to do. Even when I asked. And I was forced to be at my desk from 8 to 5.30. They would. Of course. Notice if I left at 5.29 but not that I was sitting there doing nothing woman facepalming. Have you never seen office space? Please stop whatever you are doing and watch the movie and then report back. Shish don't ruin it for the rest of us. Could you tell us your job title and field? I'd kill for this. I've been feeling this exact thing. Left my grocery store job for a really nice office job getting paid 4x more for 10x less work. I'm so sure that I would have actually died from stress if I never left my old job. In my current experience. Yep. Feels nice. One of the problems I have as a manager, particularly when working with early career new employees, is estimating how long it takes for them to get proficient at their tasks. Particularly when I'm pulled away by my primary duties and don't check in as often as I should. I invariably either overestimate and give them too much work or underestimate and don't give them enough, especially during the first few months. I do notice, however, when they put in the time to do it well, learn about the overall processes they support, and ask for additional taskings. It's part of the feedback during our weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings, at least for my direct reports. I don't mind an employee who shows up on time, does what's asked of them, and goes home at the end of the day. If the minimums weren't good enough, they wouldn't be called the minimums they get a satisfactory rating during annual performance. Reviews and their jobs are safe. The ones who go above and beyond, however, get rated higher, are eligible for more bonuses and are more competitive for promotions. I feel the same. Just started an IT apprentice role and I feel like a lot of my days are like yours. I try not to take the piss and read up on stuff when it's quiet. But I'll complete the tiniest tasks and get compliments on my efforts. Yet in 2020 I was breaking my back as a delivery driver for retail on shit money. Corporate world is less physically taxing and there are fewer angry customers to deal with. Unless you're in the customer service part of the company. So. Life is a bit easier. That said, if you're only responding to few messages and doing basic projects, some of your work may be ripe for consolidation, automation or outsourcing. If this something you want to do, try to find projects to increase your value to the company. For balance, there's a whole sub called R, Antiwork that suggests you don't do more than the minimum unless you get paid well enough. Too easy usually means you're expendable. Okay I thought it was just me. I'm a software engineer. I hated it before. Commute early for long to just appear there. Have lunch. Continue the day and commute again without doing anything. But since working from home. I don't mind it a bit. I get much time for reading. Piano. And watching anime. My kid is, working from home, for $85,000 a year but hasn't worked, more than 5 or 6 hours a week. Since April of last year. Office jobs aid essential. 
to making rich people more money. Do most office jobs pay people to do nothing? It definitely depends on exactly where you're working and what your responsibilities are. But, basically, yes. Numerous studies have shown that the average office worker isn't putting in a full eight hours. Everyone knows it. Nobody acknowledges it. I probably put in about four hours of real productive work in the average eight hour day. Sometimes more, sometimes less. I transferred from my London company to Colorado on a two year contract. They wouldn't honor my UK contract which entitled me to six weeks paid vacation guaranteed by law. Unlimited sick days and six weeks maternity leave for my pregnant girlfriend. My UK contract also included two weeks paid leave for my honeymoon. The Colorado HR women didn't believe the contract was real and said they're lucky if they even get five paid vacation days off a year. I worked about 30% more hours in the US and everyone would work unpaid overtime as they were scared. If they didn't perform they would be replaced due to the US piss poor labor laws. I lasted three months before returning to the UK. Coincidentally, a few Americans moved to our London office after finding out our benefits, which are actually worker rights guaranteed by law in the UK. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Eracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.